to Polo. My name is Emma and today I am doing the do I have that book challenge. I have been absolutely craving doing an old school type booktube challenge for so long now. Challenge videos were such a staple in the community when I first joined back in 2014 and they have just almost completely died out on the platform but I was super excited to see that Keeping Tabs created a tag slash challenge that is very very similar so I I will link her original video down below. Definitely go check her videos out. Essentially, it is just a list of 20 questions asking if you have a specific type of book, whether it's based on the content or the cover. I'm not going to give myself a specific time limit because I've learned in the past that I either give myself too much time or too short amount of time and it ends up screwing the video. So we're just gonna see if we can do it super fast. Because I love making these a little bit more interesting, I've decided that I'm going to give myself a rule that I can only choose one book from one series for all of the tag questions and I'm going to be giving myself an additional point if I can choose a book that I have not discussed on my channel in 2019 so hopefully you guys can get some more underrated book recommendations so I'm going to try and grab these books as quickly as I can and then once I finish the challenge I will discuss all of the books and talk about why I chose them so in order to maximize my efficiency for this challenge I've pretty much taken off any trinkets off of my bookshelves so that nothing can fall and distract me and I had a really smart idea to tape up all of the challenges on my bookshelf so I don't have to worry about like flipping two pieces of paper I can just run right in front of it I have a stopwatch going on my computer so I'm going to start in five four three two one go okay do I have a book with deckled edges um are these deckled edges no no they are not okay not off to a great start <laughs> Um, oh, are the series of unfortunate events deckled? Yes, okay, I'm already making a book. Do I have a book with three or more people on the cover? Um, oh my God, let me hear a rhyme. Illustrations count, right? Okay, that's two. Uh, do I have a book based on another fictional story? What does that even mean? Does it mean like fan fiction? Oh, oh, I have the perfect one. Twilight Reimagined has to count, right? Of course, because it's based on Twilight. Number four, do I have a book with a title 10 letters long? Um, okay, I guess let's just start looking places. One, two, three, four. Oh, no, let's do long. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, that makes it twenty. Dang it. No, carry on is definitely way too short. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Are you kidding me? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Where is there one with ten letters? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Are you? This is getting ridiculous. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh my gosh, this is infuriating. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, of course. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, thank goodness. Uh, five. Do I have this book with a title that starts and ends with the same letter? This is hard. Oh my goodness. I feel like there's not a ton of titles that are like this. How long is it going to take me to find this? Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Okay, I think if I can find something that starts with a T and ends with a T, it might be easier. But I have no clue. This is like a truly impossible. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find Armada. There we go. We love a good, I don't know what the literary term is for a word that starts and ends with the same letter. I don't have time to think about these things. Uh, do I have a mass market paperback book? I think one of the only mass market paperbacks I have are of City of Bones. So I think I gotta take out the Mortal Instruments series early here. <laughs> Um, do I have a book written by an author using a pen name? I mean, I could do Cassandra Clare, but I'm wondering if I want to do something a Oh, oh, this is perfect. I really want to get those extra points. <laughs> um, do I have a book with a character's name in the title? Nice try, Jane Sinner. Hello, that was easy. Do I have a book with two maps in it? We're lucky if we get a book with one map in it. Is that even possible? Uh, I know Zenith has a map. Let's see. I don't even have two though. Okay, there's one map. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know if this counts, but I have 
have a poster inside of Zenith that has another map in it. It's the same map though, so I don't think it counts. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe Lunar Chronicles? I feel like sci-fi typically has a lot of maps, but apparently the Lunar Chronicles doesn't. Could Illuminate? Do you think that there's two maps in here? This whole book is literally written in mixed media. Would a diagram of a spaceship count? Because that definitely counts. I'm going to put this to the side for now because I think it counts. I think it counts. <laughs> Do I have a book that was turned into a TV show? I feel like there are so many books that I know that are in production for a TV show, but they haven't actually been made into one yet. Um, oh, I know one. What I haven't watched yet that I need to because I'm behind on all things television. <laughs> Do I have a book written by someone who is originally famous for something else? I definitely do. Um, who do I want to go with? I have a lot of memoirs, so maybe... Not a lot of memoirs. <laughs> Let's do this book. Okay. Haven't talked about you in three years. Um, do I have a book with a clock on the cover? I feel like The Diviners almost counts as a clock, but it's more of an eye, but it gives me like a clock feel, you know? I do not have time to worry about it. Do I... Wait! Oh my gosh! I might have one here. Okay. Not a clock. Yes! The tiniest clock there ever was, but it's on the cover so it counts. Do I have a poetry book? Oh yes! People Kill People totally counts for this. New favorite right here. Do I have a book with an award stamp on it? Um, Challenger Deep definitely has an award on it. National Book Award winner right here. Do I have a book with an, written by an author with the same initials as me? I highly, highly doubt this. Can I think of any authors that have the initials EG? I really do not think so. Oh my goodness, okay. No more there. Um, no, I have a couple of authors that start with E's and a couple of authors that end with G's, but no one in between that I'm aware of. E-H, oh my god, Ellen Hawkins is so close to my name, that's ridiculous. Maybe an anthology author, possibly? Could that be, could that be the solution? I'm wasting so much time here, oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna check one more and then I'm just gonna take the L if I can't find it because I do, do indeed doubt that any authors share my initials. And, okay, one more anthology, that's it. <laughs> Ellen O and Elise Chapman, so many E's and no G's at the end. Okay, we're taking the L on this one, I can't find one. Um, do I have a book that is between 500 pages and 510 pages? Oh, could Prisoner of Azkaban maybe? No, Prisoner of Azkaban has to be longer, right? Or maybe it's shorter? No, it's shorter, interesting. 500 pages, I feel like Morgan Matson books, or some of them might be 500 pages. 507, wow, what a win for me. <laughs> um, oh, I skipped one, do I have a book of short stories? I definitely do. Um, short stories, here we are. Do I have a book that was turned into a movie? Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, which one do I want to do? Let's go with Vampire Academy. Do I have a graphic novel? Um, <laughs> oh, 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 wait, no, I don't know which one I want to choose. There's so many. Um, let's go with Wires and Nerve. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, my room's going to be such a mess. <laughs> Finally, do I have a book written by two or more authors? Yes. I do, indeed, and I just want to find one. <laughs> yes! And I'm done. <laughs> So I completed this challenge in 9 minutes and 56 seconds. I definitely thought I would be able to do it a little bit quicker, but there were totally some questions that really stumped me. Now let's check out all of the books that I picked for this challenge and give you my final score. Number one, a book with deckled edges. I chose The Bad Beginning by Lemony Snicket. This tiny little middle grade book definitely has deckled edges. And I most definitely have not talked about this on my channel this year. For a book with three or more people on the cover, I went with Let Me Hear a Rhyme by Tiffany J. Jackson, which just came out and I absolutely loved and just the cover of this book is so so gorgeous. 
For number three, a book based on a fictional story, I may be stretching this challenge a little bit, but I decided to go with Life and Death by Stephanie Meyer. If you are unaware, when the 10th anniversary of Twilight came out, Stephanie Meyer basically published a version of Twilight where the main characters of Edward and Bella are gender swapped. From what I remember, I did really enjoy it. There were some changes to the original story of Twilight that I did really enjoy. For number four, a book title that is exactly 10 letters long, I struggled with this one. One, but I went with Unfiltered by Lily Collins. I don't think I've talked about this book on my channel this year, but I have actually recommended it quite a few times since, especially today. I was in uh, group therapy today at my eating disorder treatment center, and we were talking about how Lily Collins has been open about her struggles with an eating disorder, so I recommended my group read her memoir if they're fans of her. Number five, a book title that starts and ends with the same letter. I'm going with Armada by Ernest Cline. I don't have anything to say about this book because I haven't read it. For number six, a mass market paperback. I went with this mass market edition of City of Bones that I have. Number seven is a book written by an author using a pen name and I went with The Silkworm by Robert Galbraith, which if you did not know is a pen name for JK Rowling. Have not read this book, definitely have not talked about it this year. For number eight, a book with a character's name in the title, I of course had to go with Nice Try Jane Sinner by Leanne Olkey, which of course follows a girl named Jane Sinner. This one also might be bending the rules a little bit, but number nine was pick a book with two maps in it, and I could not for the life of me find a book that had two separate maps in it. So I think it's fair for me to go with the Illuminae File series by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I would not be surprised if there were two like geographic maps in Illuminae because the entire book is told in mixed media, so there's tons of pictures in it. But I feel like because there are multiple, multiple different diagrams of spaceships in this book, I feel like those kind of count. To be accurate, I did look up the definition of maps and one of the first words in the Google definition is a diagrammatic representation of things. So I think this counts. Have not talked about this book in 2019, so I think it is a well-earned two points. Number 10 is a book written by a famous person. So I'm going with Everything I Learned About Life I Learned in Dance Class by Abby Lee Miller. I used to be a huge Dance Moms fan and even now I'm very excited for the upcoming season. I did read this book when I was deep in my Dance Moms phase. I can't say I learned a lot from it, but I mean, I read it. <laughs> For number 12, a book with a clock on the cover, I'm going with Umberland by Wendy Spinale. You know, it's not as obvious as you might think it would be, but right there, that's a pocket watch. And a pocket watch is a form of a clock. I definitely have not talked about this book since I first hauled it because I have yet to start the series and this is book two, but I've always really been intrigued by it because they are all like steampunk retellings of different types of fairy tales. So for example, this is an Alice in Wonderland retelling. So I'd really like to get to this series someday. Next for number 13 is do I have a poetry book? And because I don't own a ton of poetry, I feel like it's fair for me to go with People Kill People by Ellen Hopkins which is like half written in verse and poetry and half written as a normal novel. I did read this book just this past month and I absolutely loved it despite being someone who doesn't love poetry. So if you are in a similar boat to myself and want to give it a try, I'd highly recommend it. Number 14 is a book with an award stamp on it and I decided to go with Challenger Deep by Neil Schusterman, which won the National Book Award in maybe like 2015 or whatever year it was published. And it is so deserving of that because it's book was absolutely magnificent. Unfortunately, I was unable to find an author who has the same initials as me. Number 16, do you have a book of short stories? I surely do, and that is Through the Woods by Emily Carroll. This is a horror graphic novel collection, and I read it many years ago and really, really enjoyed it, but it is definitely one I do not get to talking about a lot. For a book that is between 500 and 510 pages, my guess that it would be a Morgan Madsen book was correct, and I went with The Unexpected Everything. This was actually a group book for the Bino Bibliothon quite a few years ago, and I really enjoyed it. I just Thought it was a fun contemporary and I actually really appreciated the length because it's much bigger than a lot of contemporary novels out there. Number 10, do you have a book that was turned into a TV show? I do and that is Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. I was actually not a fan of this book. I think I gave it two stars. It was just very dry to me but it does have I believe like an HBO series that I'd really like to watch because I think that I might enjoy it more in like a visual format. Number 18 is a book that was turned into a movie and I went 
went with Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. Definitely a favorite series of mine, absolutely not a favorite movie adaptation. <laughs> for number 19, which was a graphic novel, I sort of like froze for a second because I could think of like maybe three off the top of my head, but they were all a part of series that I had already mentioned, like they were graphic novel adaptations. But I found one that also would get me some extra points, and that is Wires and Nerve by Marissa Meyer. This is a graphic novel spin-off series to the Lunar Chronicles, which I adore and would really like to reread sometime soon, but I haven't gotten around to reading Wires and Nerve yet. And finally, number 20, do I have a book written by two or more authors? I have many, but I decided to go with Tiny Pretty Things by Sona Sharipatra and Danielle Clayton. This is like a fun drama-filled series about dance, and as someone who has been a dancer for most of my life, I really enjoyed it, and I kind of wish there was a third book in the series because there's only a sequel, but it was a good time. Alrighty, well that concludes my do I have that book challenge. I had so much fun filming this video and if there are any more bookshelf challenge videos out there that you'd like to see me do, please let me know in the comments. I'm going to tag a couple of old school booktubers that I used to love watching their challenge videos back in the day and a couple of new people who I'd also like to see their take on this video. I'm going to tag Perus Project, Read by Zoe, Paul and Bananas Books, A Book Utopia, Robbie Reads, Books with Chloe, Irish Reader, Ali M Books, and A Dash of Ash. So that concludes this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you soon for a new one. Bye!